You can find an overview of all my videos at www.genesispc.com and you click on the button videos on YouTube and you get a complete listing of all the videos I created for you on Excel on Excel VBA on Access Access VBA and VB script tips I have a very simple database here it has actually only one table and in the table are date of hires and I would like to transfer them into Outlook so that I get reminded when someone was hired on certain days. Uh, I put them all at the first day of the month, but it doesn't really matter what you do. So we are going to create a VBA code in module one. And because I am planning to create a shortcut to this a VBA code, I have to do a little more. In, in Excel you can activate shortcuts to macros, you cannot do that easily in Access. So if you want to do that, you have to create a macro first, then a sub macro in the macro, and name it with the shortcut key. This stands for control, so I'm doing control D and put the D inside braces. And don't forget to save that macro as auto keys. That means it automatically runs when you open the database and it assigns the shortcut keys. That's what I did here. So I have here my auto keys macro. I created a sub macro. In this case by in the later versions of Access you create a sub macro. In older versions you just assign a name. You, get, you insert a new column and you assign a name. And the name is what your shortcut is going to be. And then inside that macro you do the action run code. And run code always requires a function name. I call that function date of uh, hire in the calendar. Don't forget open and close parentheses. Don't forget open and close parentheses. Functions always have parentheses. And that's all I have to do. So now I'm going to module one again and I implement my function. Not a sub but a function. Database in calendar. I save the shortcuts in auto keys. I made a reference to data access, access object and to Microsoft Outlook tools, references and make sure that you have those activated. Microsoft Active Data Objects Library and the Outlook Object Library. If you cannot find the Access Data Object, look, browse for ASDAO DLL. Once you have done that, you can declare a variable of the DAO record set type. DAO is the library dot record set. Then I create a variable for the Outlook application and for Outlook appointment item, for I have to also communicate with Outlook. I declare another variable of the recurrence pattern because I want to do this every year. So I know the next year also who was hired at the beginning of that month. I declare a few more variables. Then I use the ORS variable of the DAO record set type to refer to the current database open record set the table TBL employees. That's how I call that table. Set OL to a new Outlook application. And now this is a little annoying, but that's the way it is with DAO. In order to find out how many records you have, you have to move to the last record first. Otherwise the, the record count is one. It goes to the first record. The cursor is on the first record in that database 
TBL employees table. And then I move back to the first one in order to start with the first one and then the next one, etc., etc., before I can loop. So I run for i equals zero, everything in access is zero based, so the first record is zero, to the number of records minus one. I did minus eight, so I do only the first three records. I have ten records, so uh, I do only the first three. Then I use o a point to create a new item in the Outlook application of the appointment item type. And then I use a with statement, so I don't have to refer all the time to o a point. I store an s start from the record set that is always the cursor is now on the first record in the field that I called DOH. I take from that S start the left part, the length of that whole thing minus the four characters for the year. I have four characters for the year. If you don't, you have to adjust that. And I add to that today's year of today's date. Because S start is a string type variable, the appointment item needs a real date. So I have to use a cast or a convert function that casts it into a real date. The subject of the line is a higher date. And I put in the location the information who it is. From the field first name, hook onto it a space, and from the field last name. Because I the cursor is on the first record, it does that for the first record. The meeting status is not a non-meeting, reminder set to true. And then I want the recurrency pattern. So I use O recur, which is of the recurrency pattern type. I get the recurrency pattern and I set that type to recurs yearly. Don't forget to save the appointment. Close your with statement. And, and that is probably the most important part. If you don't use that line, you will stay on that first record forever. So the loop is endless, basically. So move next. Remember, we had to move to the last one in order to get a correct record count. Then I move to the first one to put the cursor on the first record. And inside the loop, I move to the next one each time until I reach the two record set count value. Then I set ORS to nothing and OL to nothing. I release those two variables. Close your function and everything should work now. If I do Control Shift D, I had already saved all of this. Otherwise you have to close it, open it again and do Control D. It looks like I did that. It looks like nothing happened, but a lot happened. I'm going to my Outlook calendar, January 1st, that George Bush was hired on that date. On, January, on February 1st, Bill Clinton was hired. On March 1st, Bill Brown was hired. And I assure you this also happened for March 2015, etc., etc. Uh, in April, I have no one because I stopped after three records. So in other words, the VBA code worked well. If you want to be notified that it worked, just put a message box here that says everything has been stored in the calendar. So I developed a tool for regular access items, issues that you need to know. Let macros do the work, there is more on macros there. And I also developed a CD-ROM for Access VBA. It was made for 2007, that is still very useful in 2010 and 2013. The interface has changed a little bit, but all these 
issues can still be done in that way. You can find all of this at genesispc.com.